All right. So what the heck is this thing about formant? I, what's formant all about? There are plenty of really complex ways that I could describe what formants are and how formants work. So first we'll listen to what's going on when we don't change our formant. And then I'll give you my explanation of how we can understand what a formant is and how it works. So here I've got this vocal. Uh, cycle it here. Held so tight. I'm going to change this note so that it goes up. Uh, uh, we held so tight. Okay, it, it pitch shifted. That's fine. But the quality of his voice kind of changed. It doesn't sound like Jeremy singing a higher note. It sounds like a 10-year-old Jeremy maybe singing that note. We held so tight. Here's the problem with pitch shifting this way. We're changing all of the pitches at the same time as we move them up. Where a singer or a human voice, there are certain aspects of their voice that aren't going to change. There's a big difference between my buddy Jeremy singing a higher note and me making Jeremy sing higher by crushing his head and larynx down so that they're smaller and therefore produce a higher note. <laughs> Does that make any sense? So when we sing pitches, if I sing a pitch and a woman sings a pitch, we'll sound different even though we're on exactly the same pitch. And as we move up and down within our range, things will sound different. And that has to do with our resonating cavities of our body, our larynx, our mouth. We have this great filter that is our mouth and our soft palate and our throat that allow us to create these wonderful sounds. And, and what formants are are ways that we're altering our mouth and our soft palate and our throat and all these things to create these words. And those tones, even when we sing higher or lower, there are certain tones that remain intact. They don't pitch up and down with us. So I'm going to take this formant shift and I'm going to bring it down just a bit. And we'll note that it'll actually sound a little bit more like Jeremy's voice. We held so tight. So that sounds more like Jeremy than if I take this and put it back. We held so tight. Hear how it not only did it go up, but it made him sound like a kid, it made him sound like a child. If I take it to his extreme. Uh, we held so tight. See, that doesn't sound right at all. But as I'm pulling this down, imagine it, you know, instead of turning him into Mickey Mouse, I'm letting him have his, you know, his mouth shape and his throat and everything. Those aren't going to go up in pitch as well. They're going to stay the same size. We're just having him sing a different note. We held so tight. See, it's already starting to sound more normal. Now, if you go really radically in the opposite direction, excuse me, I accidentally, I accidentally clicked on the wrong thing there. I'll go way down here. We held so tight. <laughs> Then you can go for some really cool, weird effects where you're taking these formants like way outside the range of, of his normal body and resonating cavities and things. So formants are a lot of fun and they're a way when you're doing pitch and we're going to be creating uh, backing vocals and things like that and harmonies. And we want to make sure that we are very careful with the formants so that when everything's playing together, things sound natural-ish. You know, they, they need to be within a certain range of sounding natural, like something that would happen in the world. So there we go. Formants, a way to keep your voice from turning into Darth Vader or Mickey Mouse, or if you want to, a way to make your voice sound like Mickey Mouse. Check this out. I'll just do this real quick. Uh, I'm going to take his voice at its original pitch, and I'll make him sound like a little boy singing the same note. We held so tight. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's get on to the next one. 